Hi, I'm Tim of The Watchbox, and I am joined by an absolute legend, a man who needs no introduction, but I'm going to give him one anyway. Philippe Dufour graduated from the Horological School of the Valais du Jeu back in 1967. His career has spanned Chagère Le Coult, Audemars Piguet, Gérald Genta, and of course his own eponymous brand, a giant of the craft. Mr. Dufour, welcome to the show, and thank yes, you. Yes, welcome. Thank you for the invitation. Yes. Now, You've had an incredible journey from the first watch that you built wholly by yourself, the Audemars Piguet Grand Sonnery yes. Pocket Watch, to the Grand Sonnery Wristwatch of 92, the duality of 96, and the simplicity of 2000. How has your philosophy of watchmaking changed as you've transitioned from the very complicated mm. to the very simple? Yeah, okay. First, uh, why, why I made my first complicated watch? In the end of 70s, 80s, uh, I spent five years uh, restoring watches for auction, okay, auction people, mostly pocket watches, complicated pocket watches. Uh, I'm, I didn't make any money, I made a living, I could raise my, my, my three daughter, so it was okay. But I learned a lot by seeing what the old people did and try to imagine how they did it, with which tools, which equipment, you know. And uh, on 10 watches I had uh, for restoration, pocket watches, complicated. Uh, on 10, 7 were basically made in the Valet Jou. Valet Jou was specialized to make the, the what we call the uh, blank. A uh, blank, it's, uh, it's a movement made uh, 80%, okay? And they used to sell the blank to all the big brands. If you take the, the, the Patek, the Vacheron, uh, uh, mini repeater pocket watches, for example, the base was Valet Jou. If you take the, the German, also Langerson, uh, Grossman, Asman, the base, Valet de Joux. And the English, exactly the same. If you take an old uh, Smith, Mini Repeater, uh, Dent, or, or I don't remember <laughs> any, any, any more the brand, uh, it came, the base came from the Valet de Joux. That's why we say Valet de Joux is a cradle of complicated watches. Okay? Now, by seeing all that, <coughs> I say one day, I have to do it again. They did it and tried to do it. And with some old tooling, uh, uh, 1900, I bought different places. I tried to imagine how they work. And with all these tools, I, I made my first movement. I still have it in my, in my workshop, okay? It's a 19 line, that means pocket size, Grand Sonnery Mini Repeater. With that, I went around the Switzerland uh, uh, collector's specialized shop, you know? Everybody say, yes, nice, carry on. But nobody trust me. Nobody knew me at that time. And they always say, why don't you work with a brand? I say, I propose that to EP. And they order me five watches. It's not many watches, but in terms of work, it's a lot. Okay, it's about five years work. It took me about 2,000 hours to make a watch like that. But to work for the other is not easy for your ego, you know, because I was not... Uh, uh, low to say I made it, okay? And on top of that, on five watches, they broke two in the factory. You know, they treat my work as potatoes. One day I say no more for the other. I'm going to try again, something. And I, I said, now this time I go on the wristwatch because the market is a bit more easy than pocket watches. And I, I check on the market, it was some, to be on started, we are in the end of the 80s, huh? uh, some to be on some perpetual calendar. And I say, okay, make a perpetual calendar, and what? It's just another one. I have to make something special. And I check, and the Grand Sonnery Mini Repeater wristwatch was never made. I say, okay, I'm going to try to do it. So it took me two years and a half to, to make, uh, and uh, I use uh, the CAD system to make the drawing, because I say, if I make a, a, a wristwatch, uh, the job, I, I have to repeat the job, so I've, uh, I, I need some uh, accurate information. For the pocket watch, I don't have any drawing. I just have some sketches, that's it. But for the wristwatch, I have all the drawing, it's, uh, it's all, all uh, you know, the measurement and everything. It's how I started. Why I made, I made the Grand Sonnery is because uh, uh, to be maybe recognized, that was the whole idea, you know? And then uh, I made what uh, f uh, four, five, five of them, 
And then uh, the market, the Asian market, asked me, could you do something more simple? Again, I, I checked the market. Tobian coming, you know. Uh, it was in 1994, 95. And I said, okay, I don't want to make a Tobian because I'm not very keen for the Tobian, honestly. Uh, for a wristwatch, you don't need a Tobian. You are the Tobian, okay? Because the Tobian basically is made by so many different positions. Yes, it's, it's made by, by, by Briguet. By Briguet with pocket watch, always standing at the same place, and it compensates uh, very, very easy. This we can understand, but on, on the watch, wrist watch, you don't need it. And I always say, how many, how many Tobian are sold with a cost? Okay, you have that answer. Okay, no, that was 96. I launched the uh, Jolite. Jolite, I saw on the old. Uh, uh, an old um, uh, museum book. It was a Rockford Time Museum in the States. They are all technical watches, and on that book it was a, a, a watch made in the watchmaking school from Le Sentier with two balances in the 30s. And I saw that. I said, "Wow, it could be an idea, not to be on, but something like that, you know." And I try to understand how it works. It was not easy uh, how the, the differential work. Okay, and I made the first prototype too. So I discover the effect of one balance to the other and, and how it works, in fact. And then I, I reduce the size, everything, and I make a 34 millimeter uh, uh, wristwatch. It was the first duality in '96. I was planning to make '96, uh, um, 25 watches. Why? I don't know. I said, okay, I'm going to make 25. And I sold nine. And it was no more order, no more interest, so I stopped making it. You know? And then the, the, the simplicity uh, came uh, in 2000. And it's funny because it's a friend of mine, uh, Antoine Presuzio from Geneva. At that time, he was working uh, quite well with uh, the Japanese market. And one day he told me, why don't you make a, a watch for the Japanese people? I said, well, why? He told me, you know, you're well known in Japan. It's a Dufour fan club in Tokyo. I, I told him, come on, I don't believe you. He said, yeah, it's true, because the Japanese, they, 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 they have the knowledge, they want to understand everything. But I told him, I never sold a watch in Japan. He said, no, there's no problem. And I said, okay, I'm going to make a, re, uh, a simple watch. Uh, it was two-way, okay? It was uh, like everybody's way. That means you pick up your phone, uh, you call a, a movement maker, they make it for you, engrave your name, you, put, you give somebody else to put the dial, hands, casing, everything, and you put the watches in the boxes and you make the new voices, okay? It was one way. Uh, with that way, probably you can make money, uh, easy money, fast, but not for long term, okay? So uh, I said, no, this is not my way. I don't want to destroy what I, I try to build. I trace a line, and I have to follow that line. I said, okay, I'm going to, to, to draw a, 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 a new caliber, the simplicity movement. It's what, what I did. And I launched it in the year 2000. Uh, it was a bit selfish because I'm, I made a watch to please myself, you know, with some references I had from watches from the, the 50s, the 60s, 70s, you know. And I took uh, a bit of everything from this period to make the, the simplicity, okay? And I launched it in the year 2000 in Basel, and uh, very fast the uh, interest was great for, uh, from the, the Japanese market. And uh, I found uh, uh, retailers uh, who had exclusivity in, uh, in Tokyo, and um, they did a marvelous job because on the 200 watches they sold 120. In Japan, it's all I start. So it's it's accurate to say that Japan was really the birth of the simplicity. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Now beyond, um, I guess the last of the simplicity models were produced maybe 2013, 2014. Yeah, I still I still produce some. Oh, still available. Be because it, it has never been a, a limited edition. You know, probably today I I made altogether 210 or 12 or something like that. Yes. 
know, your, your future ambitions because your career has spanned decades in different idioms, different brands, styles, and complications. When you look towards the future, how do you define your future goals given all that you've already accomplished? What does the future hold? What do you mean for, 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 for yourself as a watchmaker? Oh, a watchmaker, yeah. Uh, my future, unfortunately, I, w I would love to have 30 years old now, but <laughs> I'm not. But the, the, the idea, I think I'm, I'm lucky because uh, I'm, uh, I'm remarried and uh, uh, we have a, a daughter. Uh, my, let's make my fourth daughter, okay, she's uh, 18 years and since the age of 13, uh, I ask her what she wants to do, you know, to carry the, the study and she said, no, I want to learn a watchmaker and I said, come on, it's not for you, it's an old profession, forget it, okay. And during two years we were fighting because I wanted to push her to see if she really wanted that, you know. And uh, finally, uh, uh, she started uh, at the watchmaking school, the same school as I did, and now she's in the uh, third year. So uh, in one year, probably she's coming with me and uh, try to carry what I've started. That's all I did. So that's quite literally the future. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Now let me ask a question about uh, the influence of technology you've used. You mentioned you use computer-assisted modeling, CAD. Yes, yes. But all of your component fabrication and finishing is manual. Where do you draw the line? How much technology is too much technology? I don't think you would use silicon. I don't think you would use plastics. No. You know, si silicon for me, it's, it's like that, okay? Uh, uh, if somebody can prove me silicon is better than steel escape wheel, okay, I will, I will do it but nobody proved it. I know by experience, 100, 150 years old watches, you know, when I used to restore these type of watches, the escape wheel uh, made out of steel was never worn. That I know, okay? If you can prove me uh, <laughs> a new material can do the same way, I will accept. I see where but you're coming from. It, it's a combination of the performance of the part, but also the ability to repair the part yeah. in the future. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, uh, 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 if you if if you make a part in a classical material, you can always repair it, but not with some modern technology. When it's gone, it's gone, you know. So uh, I don't say uh, the big brand they have to do that, you know. But very often, it's uh, it's 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 a marketing purpose, you know. You make you make a world premiere, okay, with a ten years old movement with a new silicon escape wheel. You make a world premiere. It's a bit short, I would say. So let me ask you a question about your extended practice. Now, obviously, your daughter Magali, I believe, no, is joining you. Yeah, Mag Magali is my first daughter. Oh, you know? Yeah, she worked uh, three three four years with me. And she wanted to do something different. She was not really happy. I told her, I cannot chain you in the workshop, you know. Uh, 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 do what you want. And she, she, she went, she worked with Patek Philippe. No? So you've had some family, some assistants, some other watchmakers and finishers. It seems like at times it's been just you working alone. Yes. And at times you've had a small amount of family and assistants. How do you find that balance? How do you, I guess, resist the temptation to grow the workshop? Because it always seems well, like it comes back to a small circle yeah, for you. You know, if I make a, a statement today, I would say some positive, some negative. The positive is that commercially is no problem, you know. I, n I never spend any money in publicity or marketing, but my, 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 my watches are known around the world. I have so many orders I cannot uh, follow, you know. This is a very positive. But in the negative, it's that uh, since m m many years I tried to build a team and I failed, okay? Why? It's because uh, uh, well, the level is high. I always say to my watchmaker, you know, the level is here. If you are here, it's okay. If you are here, it's not enough. You know, and with the young generation, they, how to say, they cannot gu guarantee, they, how to say, they cannot have a self-control to say, yes, this time it's okay. Now, they come to you and say, can you check if it is okay, then now it's not okay. And I look and say, no, let it heal, a lot of scratches, just do it again. Okay, you go and you back and go, you lose your time. 
and I get nervous because when I have somebody uh, uh, doing uh, the job uh, three, three times longer, it's boring, you know? And uh, also at, at the end, uh, you say, I had this watchmaker for one year, what has he done? How much it cost me? And you lose money. The purpose is not to make money on somebody else's uh, shoulder, no, but at least to break even, you know. And the, I'm very disappointed about the, uh, the young generation. But I would say two watchmakers I had, uh, one now is uh, in charge of the, of the of teaching uh, uh, at Jägerkult, okay? At least what he, he learned uh, is not lost, and the other one is a, is a professor at the watchmaking school. So, not a bad uh, count of alumni. E exactly. Yeah. So let me ask you a question about the younger generation, because I know you've been critical about standards, and you hold them to a very high level, mm -hmm. your own. Are there any young watchmakers in the Valley du Jeu or beyond who have impressed you? People who have caught your eye, who may be someday masters at the level you yeah, expect. Yeah, we we have some young one. Not I we say not enough, but we have. We have uh, like uh, David Kondo, he's do, doing a, a, a good job, uh, using also modern technology, but the product is very interesting. Or Romain Gauthier also, but Romain Gauthier started small, but now it, well, it's maybe 20 people or 25 people, you know, it's, it's a big structure now. And uh, yeah, we, we have some uh, young watchmaker like uh, Julien Tixier, now he's, uh, he's opening a shop in, in, in Valley de Jour. He's doing also things, building, inventing different things. Yeah, but I always say it's not, it's not enough. You know, if I compare, if we take the, the academy of the uh, AHCA, you know, uh, who have more foreign, uh, uh, a new watchmaker than the Swiss, you know, uh, you, we have th th now three, three or four very soon uh, Japanese watchmaker doing marvelous things, Chinese watchmaker, Russian watchmaker, you know, but very few Swiss, yeah. Have you ever considered, given all your knowledge and your experience, have you ever considered becoming a, a teacher of watchmaking at the very school where you once studied the Eco Yeah, Rogerie? you know, uh, I, I was not in very good term with the school because, you know, my problem is sometimes uh, I say what I think, you know, and uh, doesn't always please people. But I'm a free man, uh, old enough to say what I'm thinking. And um, uh, yeah, one day, one day, uh, it was an uh, interview um, for for a Swiss magazine regarding the the loft of the Nauhau, okay? And they interview different people, like Mr. Simonai from the West, different people, and uh, I. They took some uh, of my sentences, uh, and I said, I don't understand why, for example, in the, in the watchmaking, school, watchmaking school, we don't teach anymore uh, the way to finish, to have a nice finish on, on the watch movement, you know? The beveling, the Geneva waves, and all that, you know? My sentences have been published, and uh, three, three, four months later, I had some visitors, I wanted to visit the school and try and arrange a meeting. And the director of the school call, called me back and he said, uh, yeah, you're two German watchmakers, they can visit, but you, I don't allow you to come to the school. I said, what's the reason? After what you said, what did I say? You don't want us to teach the, the, the children, the, 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 the young watchmaker, how to finish to make a Geneva waves. In fact, we women are doing that. I said, you're completely out of the of the of the of the subject, be, be, because it's only way we have. It's the only thing we have, the, the finishing and the, the hand finishing. Now I was completely wrong. Uh, that's why uh, now it's, it's better. They change the director, but but still, the school, the purpose of the school. I mean, the the, the target of the school is to is to is to is to uh, to teach watchmaker for the use of the factory. And what do they knew? Uh, what do they need? It's uh, it's operator, okay? And I see some young watchmakers. They spend four years study and they are not happy at work because they told me, I'm here since two years. I put darling hands, 
And beside me, I have a young girl, she's doing the same job as me. She, ne she never learned anything. But the guy went four years to do that, you know. So it's a lack of respect, I would say, in the factory. The guy who spent four, four years to study, uh, he has been, he has to be uh, consider, uh, considered differently, I would say. Now, it's fascinating to note that you came from restoration early yeah, on. Yeah. Uh, many of the great watchmakers of our time have Michel Parmigiani, F.P. Journe, exactly. yourself. Um, also, just the knowledge learned from reconstructing an old watch imparts a different kind of understanding, perhaps, than a school. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that you must conduct restoration in order to become a master? Does that need to be part of your education? Yeah, I think because, uh, because in the school, we. We don't know. They don't do anymore. They, they still, like in watchmaking school in Le Sentier, they still make a school watch. But I would say most of the parts are already done. Okay? It's just a question of, of beveling or things like that, you know? Uh, when I used to make my school watch, we used to, to sew, you know, the, 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 the bridges and then to file and everything. And, and little, it's less and less, you know? And this experience, you can get it from from a restoration, and sometimes I'm some young visitor, uh, young st student from the school, watchmaking school, they come to me and I always tell them, go to the flea market, buy a 100 franc watch, you know, old silver, cylindri cylindric, uh, escapement, something like that. Uh, you, you buy it and you're disassembled, it's absolutely broken, you try to do it again, uh, uh, and try to imagine how they did it 100 years ago and so on. It's a, it's a good start, a good experience. Now, it's interesting that one of your peers in the industry, Peter Speakmarin, who also conducted restoration, yes. he was once asked if he's a watch collector, and he said, I, I take more pleasure from being able to create a watch than mm -hmm. from collecting them. But I know you have at least two modern watches in your collection. Yeah. With the GMT, Master II, yeah. and the Datagraph yeah. from Alango yeah. Gonzola. Yeah. Yeah. What process goes through your head when you choose a watch, not as a watchmaker, but as a collector? Well, you know, uh, when I saw the, the datograph the first time in the 90s, it was at Basel. And uh, in the window, it was a scale 20 uh, movement datograph. And I saw that, I said, wow, look at that. And then I saw the watch in real. Oh, it, it was amazing. I say, the German are kicking us. OK? And I say, okay, now, now the Swiss who are going to respond. I'm still waiting for the response, okay? Because it's, 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 it's just amazing, this chronograph, the way, the way it's done, the way it works. The, you have a three-dimension uh, 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 view. It, 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 it's just, and I, one day I say, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not rich, but I say, I have to have one. You know? and I, went, I went to a shop, and yes, and I, I ordered one. I couldn't. <laughs> for the platinum was a basic model platinum was to so i i took the the pink gold with black down you know the, the people call it the dufograph this model i call it the dufograph <laughs> yeah, you see this one my my first uh, new watch and the, uh, the last one is last year when i saw the, the pepsi i don't know why but it's maybe an old kid dream i, I don't know and i saw that watch i said I must have one, you know. So again, uh, I went to a shop because I, um, I don't like to, you know, to call people to, to try to, to have something. No, no, I, I go to, to the, the watchmaking shop and I, I order, as to me, it's a, it's a waiting list. I say, okay, put me on your waiting list. I don't know if they put my name, uh, I don't know how, but at least uh, two months later, you call me, uh, your watch is here, you know. And it's just amazing. And you know, Rolex, I, I admire Rolex because uh, it's also an advice I give to the, to, to, to the young people. They ask me, I want to start collecting watches. What is your advice? Okay, I, I give two, two brands. I say, Rolex, it's a good money for value. value. Uh, quality, you know, five years guarantee, accurate, cost, and, and all that, you know. You don't take any risk. At least uh, you can uh, maybe gain money if you have to sell, to sell it, okay? And uh, uh, the other one uh, is not Swiss, sorry, but it's Nomos. 
because Nomos also it's very interesting brand, you know. They don't tell you uh, blah blah blah. Uh, uh, you know, it's homemade movement. It's done properly. They don't tell you it's done uh, like hundred years ago. No, it, it's pure, uh, functional, and the design is very very pleasant. The young generation they like they like this type of watches. So it's my two favorite. I give uh, as advice, you know. Well, thank you so much, Philippe Dufour. Master watchmaker and a watch collector just like us, Mr. Dufour. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Merci beaucoup. Merci.